everyone and welcome back. If this is your first time here, this is the Black Kids White Coats YouTube channel and we make videos to give you tips and tricks to put your best foot forward in medical school. If you don't know who I am, my name is Adalma and I'm a fourth year medical student. I'm graduating in a couple of weeks and I recently matched into a program in Southern California so I'm really excited. Now for the real tea, why you're here. So yes, this video is to give you tips that helped me personally improve my step one score by 50 points. Yes, 50 points in a two week period. Now, no shade, but disclaimer, this video is not for the people who have 260s, although my tips might be able to help you. This video is more for the people who are freaking out, who are worried, which is most people but especially those who feel like they want to defer or that they don't know what they're doing and they're just feeling extremely overwhelmed so I hope the advice that I give you helps you and gives you a little bit of guidance so I wrote some things down in my notebook so here we go my first tip is to accept that you're not going to know everything and the sooner that you can accept that the better off you'll be you can try as hard as you can which you should but just know that even out of all of the material that you're given you're only going to have access to 95 percent of it so one advice that i was told when i was studying and i'm giving to you because it helped me a lot was study as much as you can study as hard as you can and make sure that what you know you know well what you know, you know cold. And the things that you don't get to or you're not as strong in, granted, this is saying like if you don't have that much time left, let it go, be okay with that. But the things that you should know and you should have covered a lot of information by now, you know more than you think you do and know that information down cold. Which brings me to um, my first tip, change environments. So for me, what I was doing was we have a little study section at school that I would go to every morning and just study until nighttime. So during that two week period where I saw that big increase, I actually made a really big difference. I actually just started studying from home and these four walls were kind of my everything for at least, no, 24 hours. No, I'll say like 22. So I had like my desk, here and then I had another desk right here so I would switch back and forth so I wouldn't get too too tired and then the only time I would leave this room was either if I had to go to the bathroom um, to eat me and my brother who was also studying for step one at the same time we would go for 20 minute walks just to like get fresh air and gym that's the only time I would leave I would stay in here and which brings me to my second tip setting a schedule it is important to set a schedule, however, I don't advise being so specific. So for me, when I first started studying, it was like, okay, 8 a.m. I'm going to wake up and then I'm going to go until 10.01 with my first question block and review. And then from 10.01 to 10.05, I'm going to have a bathroom break. And then from 10.05 to 11.35, I'm going to review the rest of my first question block. That's insane. And sometimes if you don't hit those milestones, for me, I noticed that my confidence would go down and then as a result, I wouldn't be able to study as effectively. So I would suggest setting a loose schedule and finding out what works for you. So for me, I'm not a morning studier. I'm not someone that can wake up at 8 a.m. and just be ready to go. For me, it was more like, okay, I'll wake up at 10 a.m. and then I'll stay up really, really late. Now, if you're like that, if you're like me, you have to also take into account that there are test centers that do have later step starting times. So some places I know start as early as 7.30, 8 a.m. And then I saw some places that were as late as 1. So find out what works for you. If you just so happen to be a later studier like me and you find yourself having an early start time for your step, just take that into account and then probably like a week before your, date, your test date, start shifting it back so that you can get ready and get used to being awake um, at that time.
for me some people might say like why not just do that from the beginning i just wanted to maximize how i studied and so for me it was best that i just study how i was used to and then right before make that switch so for me i also used an app called cram fighters to help myself with the schedule so instead of saying like you know from 8 to 10 i'm doing this or 10 to 12 i'm doing that cram fighters allows me to put all of my resources and what date i want to get it done by and based on that then the app will tell me like okay you need to read this watch these videos and do this many questions and if you follow that plan you'll be able to be done by your date and you can also take into account you know if you want any days off if you have things to do because life still goes on you might have weddings you might have hospital things you have to take care of so cram fighters was really good to help me which brings me to my third point cut it down your resources i talk to people and they're like i'm doing first aid i'm doing pathoma i'm doing like boards and beyond i'm doing master the board and anki and sketchy and sketchy farm and it's too much you need to cut it down to the bare bones because the more resources that you have the more information that's coming down your throat which you might think oh that'll help me better because i'll know more information but honestly it'll hurt you because then it's almost like you're spreading yourself too thin so for me I stuck to the UFAP mnemonic, so it was my U World, my first aid, and my pathoma. And then for me, I'm really, I have like my notebook. I'm really a note oriented person. So something that helped me was just cutting down my resources. Can you see that? Oh yeah. So cutting down my resources and making sure that my notes were neat and legible. Because for me, it's like if you scribble something down, and then you just go back to it and you can't even read what you wrote how are you going to remember it so for me it was like taking detailed notes which takes longer but that helped me because if i took the time to write it down and write it down neatly i would remember exactly what i was doing and then that would help me further on if that makes sense Something else that really, really helped me during, especially when I was doing my U World blocks, so, and also even my um, practice exams, making a point of looking at which questions you got wrong, which everyone's like, yeah, 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 I review my blocks, which is good. But for me, I don't have an example in this notebook, unfortunately. And if I did, that was actually chicken scratch. But I actually made a spreadsheet. Like I wrote down a spreadsheet and I wrote like, okay, this is cards. This is palm, I'm <clears throat> sorry, palm, endo, GI, MSK, biostats, whatever. And then for every question I got wrong, I would mark, like for instance, let's say I got a cardio question wrong. I would mark down that I got a question wrong and then I would mark down why. So it would either be because I forgot or I actually didn't know the information or I made a careless mistake. And the more blocks that you do and the more you implement this process and this actually helped. I think this was probably the most important step that helped me was taking the time to actually look at why you're getting the questions wrong. I did it for every block. I did it for my usmle practice test the u world ones and then the ones that i had answers to for the actual practice ones by the usmle people i don't know if that makes sense those the ones that i had answers to i would mark down okay why did i get it wrong and it took forever because it's a lot harder i mean it, it's one thing to say okay i got this question wrong okay now i know the right answer and now i know but to take it a step further and be like okay this is the right answer why is this the right answer why didn't i know this answer after a while you'll start to see trends you'll be like okay i'm starting to get a lot of cards wrong and i'm getting them wrong because i don't know it okay maybe i need to revisit cards or okay endo i'm making careless mistakes okay now i know that i need to be more meticulous or okay gi i know it but then i switch my answer so maybe i should just trust my gut more and the more that you start noticing these trends you'll go back and clean up things that need to be cleaned up and then you can be stronger the next time if you still find that you're getting questions wrong because that did happen to me 
what I would do was certain things that I noticed I was getting wrong. I would write them in my notebook, like little tidbits, like, um, okay, abdominal aorta aneurysm. I'm just reading something off here. Mostly common in male smokers or something. So a quick fact. And then all of the ones that I kept getting wrong, I would read it every night before I go to bed. Just so I could have something. And it wasn't just like reading just to read it. I would have to say it out loud. So it would stick in my head. That was probably the biggest step. Also being strategic about which test you're taking. I know when I was taking my step, they said that 18 and 19. Hoo -hoo, if you take that, your, your score is going to look like it's taking a hit. And your confidence is going to go really, really low. So for me, I knew... Hey, if I'm going to take 18-19, it's probably not that smart to take it closer to my test date. Because if you get a low score, you're going to feel really bad. But you could run the risk of getting a great score and then feel really, really confident and then slack off. So for me, those tests, I like to say, you know, take it to the middle, beginning. But if you're towards the end and you only have so many few tests left, then unfortunately, you're just going to have to do that. Another tip was that I used during this time was to take breaks because step one is a tiring process. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. And you have to trust that you're doing the best you can. And if you can look at yourself and really say, I'm doing the best that I can, you deserve to take breaks. So for me, that meant going to the gym and investing in my body and feeling good or going to dance class maybe for you it's like hey maybe i just want to go out to the bar and have a drink like within reason you know just something to just just talk to people something that removes you from the environment also setting an incentive so for me my incentive was okay when i finished step one there's well i know for my school we had about a two week period where we could do whatever we wanted so for me, I booked a vacation. So booking a vacation gives you something to look forward to. And if you book it and you actually buy the ticket and set all the arrangements, it motivates you because you can't push back your date. I mean, technically you can, but it gives you an incentive to get everything done by that date so you can go and enjoy and have a good time. My last tip is to stay positive. It's a hard process. It's a long process. And sometimes you might think to yourself, what the F am I doing? I'm never going to make it. And honestly, those thoughts will get you nowhere. Crying, sure, you can cry if you need to, but wipe your tears and pick yourself up. Because crying, stressing unnecessarily is not going to change your situation. It's not going to help your situation. If anything, it's going to make it worse. So for me, one thing that I also did within that period was to tell myself I can do this because I have no other option. What other op Because for me, I was just like, what other option do you have? Failure is not an option. So either you get it together or you get it together. And so reminding yourself that you're not the only one in this position. I know a lot of times, especially in medical school, you feel so alone. No one likes to be like, oh, I'm struggling. Because we're all, for the most part, used to success. We, most or a lot of people are type A. So showing weaknesses or weaknesses is not really, not really done. So just reminding yourself that I promise that you're not alone. That also that you're not the first person to be struggling and you're not going to be the last person to be struggling. You're not the first person that's gone through it and you will get through it and just keeping that in mind if you need someone to talk to you can always hit me up you can hit chi chi up or nelson up we've all done this before and we're, we're all moving on and it gets better so we're leaving our contact information below you can email us um but yeah i hope that helps so a summary of my tips uh Number one, accept the fact that you can't know everything, but making sure that you do work as hard as you can and make sure what you do know, you know well. Number two, change your environment if it's not working. If you're working with other people, try being by yourself. 
If you're being by yourself, maybe you need to go to a library and lock yourself in a room, even though that sounds kind of dark. Number three, set a schedule, but be realistic with your expectations of yourself. Number four, be strategic. If you're taking a cue bank, really go through why you're getting things wrong and that's how you're gonna make the most progress, I promise. If you find that your weakest is GI, buckle down and study GI. Or if it's biochem, even though for most people biochem sucks and it's the bane of their existence, buckle down and study biochem. Because if you work on your weaknesses, I promise you that's where you're going to see the most growth. A couple of questions, like two or three questions could be like 10, 15 point jump if that's your weakest subject. And it's really easy if something's, if you're really bad at something, it's really easy to lift it up rather than being okay or pretty good at something and trying to get that higher. You're going to get the more bang for your buck if you focus on the weaker subjects. Be strategic about the tests that you're taking and when you're taking them. Last tip, take mental breaks. Work out, go out with friends for a couple hours if you need to. And one last thing, accept that this process sucks. It's not a fun process. It sucks, but you're going to get through it. So with those tips, I hope I helped. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. You can like, comment, and subscribe. Leave comments down below questions down below and we'll get back to you. Hope this helped and good luck. You can do this. It gets better, but it, it does get worse before it gets better, but it does get better. Keep reminding yourself that it gets better. You will get through this and then it'll all be a distant memory, but you got this. Okay. Bye.